Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Allah Allah family Welcome to the channel you beautiful people I hope you guys are having yourself a wonderful day In today's video guys we'll be reacting to a video titled China Nuclear Leak This video was suggested by Lutfi Termak I say thank you very much brother for your suggestion The video is by China Observer And the link is in the description In case you guys wanted to pay them a visit and check out the video So without further ado guys Now let's get started with this video Recently CNN revealed a Oh wow so recent June 8th documenting a suspected leak Guangdong, at the Taishan nuclear China, power okay. plant in Guangdong, China. The nuclear power plant was set up as a joint venture CGN between China, China General Nuclear Power Group, the Sai, CGN, and Electricity and France, the EDF, with a 70% and 30% share split. So the Chinese said had 70% control. The decision maker. There we go, it's controlling, so okay. CGN, the controlling party, responded and made it clear that the environmental monitoring data showed that the indicators <clears throat> of the Taishan nuclear power plant and its surrounding environment were all It's just so hard to tell because countries no like to just control these kind of information and not On put June out the 15th, truth. The Chinese foreign ministry said there were no abnormalities at the nuclear power station <clears throat> and a trending post on Sina Weibo accused Western media of spreading rumors. On June 16th, China's National Nuclear Safety Administration, the NNSA, stated that increased radioactivity in the first circuit of Unit 1 of the Taishan nuclear power plant mm. was mainly related to fuel rod damage, a common phenomenon, and denied that a radiation leak had occurred. I don't know. The Taishan oh, nuclear hectic. power plant is located along the coast of Guangdong, less than 100 kilometers from the economically oh, developed wow. and densely populated Guangzhou urban area about 130 kilometers from Hong Kong wow. and Shenzhen urban areas and less than 100 kilometers so cool from Zhuhai, so many Macau. popular areas if a nuclear accident were to occur it would be a humanitarian disaster of enormous proportions the contaminants could also enter the sea and spread further how is it that a problem with a Chinese nuclear power plant is discussed by the US government and released through the US media the story is a bit complicated and we need to take Framatome, a look at the source okay. Framatome, a subsidiary of EDF, provides the equipment and technical mm. support for the suspected leaky reactor. The company sent a letter to the U.S. Department of Energy saying that as of May 30th, there was an increase in noble gases in wow. the primary circuit of the reactor at the Taishan nuclear power plant. How much of an increase? The report said that due to the increasing number of failures, the Chinese Nuclear Safety Administration revised the upper limit of the safety wow. value, which was more than twice the initial limit. According to the revised upper limit, it is 90%, hmm. so it's likely to be much higher than the normal standard. This is the data from May 30th, wow. and now another two weeks have passed, during which time the leaking gas may have increased. June 16th, so just National last week. China's National Nuclear Safety Administration, the NNSA, confirmed that the increase in the concentration of noble gases in the primary circuit of the Taishan-1 EPR plant hmm. is related to a few damaged fuel rods. It stated the increase is a common phenomenon and is still in accordance with the requirements of the plant's operating technical specifications. CNN spoke with Rofer, a retired nuclear scientist from Los Alamos National Laboratory, who said it means some of the containers or containment devices are broken. A gas leak usually means there's a more serious problem, and if some components related to the nuclear wow. fuel is broken, that's an even more serious problem. The Chinese side did not disclose what gas was leaking or to what extent, but the result was that China's nuclear safety department changed its standards and raised the safety <coughs> limit for the release of hazardous substances, or the plant would have to be shut down according to regulations. But after the hazardous gas release limit was revised and exceeded that of the French standard, Framatum wow. was under pressure and had to find a way to solve the problem. Now what does that have to do with the United States? Because they need to use the technology mm, from the United States to solve this problem. And the technology is subject to U.S. control. You have to apply it to the U.S. Wow. Department of Energy for a waiver in order to use it. That's why the Can't U.S. government is involved it. in this matter. One of the conditions for the U.S. government to grant the waiver was that it had to mm. be an imminent threat, not an emergency waiver. So Framatum wrote in a memo to the U.S. government, This situation now poses wow. an imminent threat to site personnel and the public. So Framatum is urgently requesting. Did the U.S. government approve it? The report doesn't say. It just says that the U.S. National Security Council held several meetings on this, communicated with the French government, and contacted the Chinese government. But it doesn't say what the outcome of the contact was, 
and that the U.S. is following the progress of this. This happened during the G7 summit that just ended, but it was not a topic of conversation at the meeting. Things are still in the progress of developing, and more news may come out soon. On June 13th, CGN announced that the nuclear units had completed their overhaul as planned and were back online on June 10th. All environmental data tests are normal. Overhaul is a different magnitude and process of repair compared to routine maintenance, which is usually done when the equipment has serious loss of function and is already failing. But the announcement did not say why the overhaul, just that the overhaul was done on June 10th and the problem was resolved. On the equipment supplying side, Framatum, the attitude is not clear. Since the harmful gas leakage has exceeded the French standards, the problem is not only extremely damaging to its reputation, but may also cause legal issues. In this case, it should insist on shutting down the power plant first before the overhaul. Since the technical power was in their hands, this was doable if they had insisted, but it seems they complied with China's request to try to resolve the problem in the face of danger while the plant was still operating. Trematum's application to the U.S. government says that there is an imminent threat to both site personnel and the public, but the press release to AFP on the 14th makes no mention of the leakage at all and says mm. that the data is within the safety limits of the operation, which is inconsistent. The Biden administration is also swinging from side to side. On one hand, they're saying it doesn't constitute an emergency yet. But on the other hand, they gave the June 8th memo to CNN to make it public and causing everyone to feel like it's an emergency. What's the story here? The Chinese media also acted very differently in the case of the Taishan nuclear leak. The Chinese media and networks have mainly denied the leak and attacked the U.S. and other Western media for creating hype about the Chinese nuclear plant. However, they didn't block out the news as they did in the past. Some experts on Chinese issues believe that the Chinese side hopes to obtain the relevant nuclear technology from the United States. The CCP has an over-the-top mindset for dealing with problems, and any technology could be utilized by the military or for other purposes. The U.S. does not want to open up nuclear technology to the CCP, but if there really was a nuclear meltdown and the U.S. refuses to provide the technology necessary to solve the problem, wow. then there is a risk of a serious disaster. Then the U.S. will have to provide the technology. This is why the Chinese media did not block out the news. At the same time, the CCP has been dispelling rumors and not acknowledging nuclear leaks in order to fuel public opinion. Nuclear technology is a major issue for the security of the world, including the United States, and there are constant requests in the CCP to expand its nuclear arsenal and to provide a nuclear deterrent to the United States. So the top levels of the U.S. government would not dare to lift the nuclear technology embargo on the Chinese side, or it would lead to massive public opposition. But before a potential large-scale humanitarian disaster, the population would likely agree to open up the technology to the Chinese side. A limited release of information through the media would first prepare the public psychologically, and then the next step might be to gradually ease the embargo on the Chinese side. Facilitating something that could lead to controversy requires reasoning that is absolute and unquestionable, and avoiding a humanitarian disaster seems like an appropriate reason. China's nuclear power growth is considered to be fast in the world, with 49 nuclear units in operation as of last year generating 4.94% of the country's total electricity. China plans to reach more than 7% nuclear power by 2025. <clears throat> of the current top 10 nuclear disasters in the world, Japan has three, the United States wow. has three, and the former Soviet Union has three. China has already surpassed Japan in 2018 in terms of nuclear power units in operation, and wow. plans to surpass the United States by 2030. With no serious nuclear accidents reported in China to date, can China really escape Murphy's Law? That was that was uh, pretty interesting, and uh, like he said, you know, the the nuclear uh, thing is related to the whole world and it's an issue for for all of us, right? Like, look at the example of Chernobyl in uh, Ukraine, I believe, uh, which was the old uh, Soviet uh, Union. Uh, they had a nuclear disaster, and people don't live there at all. Now it's a ghost town, and the most recent history. Um, 
was in Japan, right? Like uh, years ago, or really like in the recent decade, maybe also, right? Where they had the earthquake and uh, they had the nuclear disaster, which was leaking uh, to the ocean. And this uh, nuclear plant is also close to the water and such a high populated uh, area, which is uh, crazy. You know, as human beings, we need to find out a different way of um, basically creating energy, right? Than, than using nuclear, because it seems like we haven't really properly found a way of managing it uh, and that's why we've been seeing these disasters uh, over uh, time and this is a really sad news